I'm going to demonstrate about how we can use database first approach to get the data from database using ASP.NET Core 5. So the first thing what I am going to do is to install all these packages. Okay, so let's move ahead here and so I have installed all these packages. Okay, so here you can see in the dependencies I have, I have installed all these four five packages actually but the one package swashbuckle dot sp .net core is the default package given in sp .net core 5 and the rest four packages are installed by me and you can uh, install all those packages either by right clicking on dependencies and from here you can navigate to manage nugget package and you can come here in the browse section and here you can just simply put all the name the same name here and into the search bar and you will get the result okay so here i have also added one more thing here in this section i have added the connection string here you can see this is the connection string and i have i'm having this this database already available here so you can see here this is the database and it is currently available and this is the table ASP.NET users from which I will select the data all these three row I will select that okay so again let's move to the controller here it's also the this project is completely n the n a new project which I have created and after creating I install all these four packages here and I just defined my connection string here in the app dots app settings dot json file okay okay and now the next thing what we need to do after installing all the package i need to execute this command okay so let's move ahead okay so let me go to the notepad here so i have done installing the package i have added the connection string and now the next step is to run this command in package manager console so let me go ahead in the visual studio here and in package manager console i will open this package manager console and here it is and let me paste my code here so here what i am telling uh, package manager console to execute the scaffold be context command to migrate or to migrate the table structure as and columns into our code okay and here i have given the server name initial catalog is the database name okay and the credential and in the last i have provided the uh, microsoft entity, ad, entity framework core dot sql server is the provider name and at last i am asking it to put the all the code in output directory with the name of models okay so here you can see i don't have any folder right now with the name of models so it will create a folder with the name of model okay so let me go ahead and click on oh sorry i hit enter button so here it is building the project you can see and let's wait for it So here you can see build succeeded and it is now creating the database context class so, uh, database context class is now created so you can see here this is the database context name where we pay context and here you can see all the tables have here and here you can see it is already also written all the codes in the terms of fluent api okay so all these classes are defined here with the columns okay so what i will do now 
let me move to the next step three so now step three three is to modify startup class so here i need to add this db context in the service okay so to do that i have already written a code here so i just need to go ahead and copy this line number 18 okay uh, i will also add the this notepad in the description of the video the link of this notepad okay and you can also find there the complete project link of google drive okay so now let me move to the visual studio in the startup.cs class and here i will add at line number 33 i will paste here so here i have defined that this is going to be the connection string name and this connection string name need to use and here i need to change the database context name because now my context name is here the migrated context name is we have API context so here I need to paste it here need to add the references so here it is using web api db dot models so the reference is added at the top okay and okay that's it and for this you also need to add the reference use sql server and here it is the reference of that sql server okay and now let's move to the next step so next step is add dependency injection in the controller class so again i need to go to the notepad here and i need to copy this from here to add the dependency and now i will move to visual studio into the controller class and here i will add my dependency injection and here again i need to let me close this nugget first okay so now again i need to copy this and paste it here and let me copy the same again okay and here again i'll i need to add the reference of the model okay and again here let me paste it again so let me remove it okay and again here i have added the dependency injection okay so now this database context is ready to be accessed okay in any action method below so now okay not the logger okay let me copy this okay so now the next step is to select the data from table but before select to select the data we need to create the action method here in the same way as it is created here okay so now let me go ahead and go to the notepad here and here i have also already written the code to create the action method so i will copy this from here and then i will navigate to the controller class and i will paste it here the action method and here you can see i am accessing the database context which we have defined at the top and inside that right here at the top it is defined and inside that this is the class which is defined in the database so you can see here this is the class and from that class i am selecting the data and currently it is having three row okay and i am converting all those data into array and then returning the response so now let me go ahead and run this project here you can see now our project have started and 
now I need to execute this API to get the data from the from the database so what I will do now I will copy this or I have already defined it here in the okay so here you can see this is the weather forecast API which is running currently and this is getting the data and this is the first controller or you can see we can see it as a default control so this is the controller and I just executed that and now I need to execute this controller and this is by default this is the controller name which is passing as the root and again the sub root is here as user so I will copy this and I will go to the postman here and after the controller name I will add it here and now I will hit the send button and now you can see we will get all the data related to that uh, uh, all the users from the table you can see here we got the data related to user so here it is id username and this is currently the three data here what i have executed here the same query okay here it is also you can see the three row and this is the same row I just got here from API so that's all in this video for now thank you guys for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel and if you have any questions or queries please do comment in the comment section